please welcome to the stage Dr. Catalina Kersianou, lead researcher of the National Institute for Nuclear Physics. Welcome, Marhaba. I'm going to bring you into a journey into the next frontier, quantum biology. I was working in quantum physics for 20 years, searching to stretch the boundary of quantum physics beyond what we know today. Doing this, I was also working, starting to work with plants I'm going to tell you about. And I realized that there is a world there within us which needs to be investigated further. So what I'm going to present here it's a bridge which can bring us from quantum physics to biology, namely quantum biology. And maybe you by now have heard even too much about quantum physics. Quantum physics, it's our most successful theory. 100 years of quantum physics has produced a lot of knowledge also a lot of technology. We know that the quantum world seems to be weird because it goes against our intuition. There are properties in the quantum world which are really, really strange. Like particles can be in two places at once. If you would be on an electron, you would be sitting there, in the same time there, and in the same time there, here and there, superposition of states. There is another magic quantum property, entanglement. Two particles can be in correlation independently of time and space that divide them. These two properties, which are genuine quantum properties, has filled recent technologies. And we are now on the verge of these new technologies. You have heard about the quantum computers, you have heard about quantum sensors, which are relying on these genuine quantum properties, namely superposition of states and quantum entanglement. By the way, all our technologies is based on quantum physics, uh, also transistors, and the lasers which are used in operating our eyes, for example, are again quantum physics. But this, so the advent of this quantum technology made me wonder whether there is quantum inside us, not only when I work in particle accelerators or in underground laboratory as I do in Italy, trying to stretch the boundaries of quantum physics, but also within us. Is there a quantum within us? Quantum biology. And there are indications that that may be actually the case. Did you ever wonder how birds find their way when they are migrating thousands and thousands of kilometers? Like the European robin, this small little cute bird which is going across many, many thousands of kilometers. How do they do that? Do they have the capacity to look at the stars? Do they see the, 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 yeah, the ge geography? Do they have any other mean? There are indications that actually, in the bird's eyes, there is a quantum compass. There is entanglement between electrons in their molecules in a protein. And that would be amazing. And this would be able to read the magnetic field of the Earth. So they don't only see colors like we do, but they might see magnetic field of the Earth, which helps them to orient with an extremely high precision. That's not the only case we have. By the way, did you ever wonder how we feel the smell of a flower or possibly of a perfume of the desert? How we do that? There is a very successful model which tells us how we do that, the lock and key. Like the sand molecules are key to lock into the receptors of our olfactory system, then a signal is triggered to the brain. But that might not be all the story. Some research are, researchers are kind of showing that it might be more than that. 
there might be the genuine quantum tunneling property, namely that the electrons succeed to kind of cross across the wall. It's like going through the wall. We can't do that, but electrons can. Inside the molecules, inside the receptors, electrons are tunneling from one side to the other, and this is a genuine quantum effect, which depends on the potential which it's depending on the sand molecule, and this gives us enormous capacity to differentiate between hundreds and hundreds of different sands. And that's really quite amazing. But that's not all. Our plants. Is this a real flower or not? Well, leave you to guess. It seems that plants themselves, the photosynthesis in plants, the enormous efficiency, it's unreasonably, unreasonably efficient, the photosynthesis in plants. What makes it so efficient? And again, there are indications that in plants, a very interesting thing happened. There is a superposition, a coherent state going from the receptor of light up to where the energy is stored. Otherwise, might not be so efficient. Plants themselves, I studied them out of curiosity quite recently, started to study plants and measure light emitted by germinating plants. So we put some seeds in the dark, we measured this light, and what we discovered? We discovered an amazing, truly amazing thing, that this light has complexity. So analyzing it, we discovered complexity in plants. And this might point to a grammar of plants, to a way that plants communicate. Is this quantum? We don't know yet. That's something I'd like to know. I need, of course, to talk to biologists. I'm not able to discover and uncover this by myself. Not only quantum within us, but one other question is, how can eventually quantum physics change inside living organisms? And there is no better place to test this than the positron emission tomography. This technology, which puts antimatter, anti-electron in our body, which annihilates with the electrons of our body, emitting radiation, photons, which are entangled, and this entanglement dies out while traveling within our body. This might be, and that's what we are studying, an extremely powerful indicator of, for example, in medicine, of the stage of a tumor. So empowering this technology in an infinite way. So there is really an enormous field of opportunities out there, and I'd like to make this bridge of quantum and biology. So, you know, what are we? We are curious human beings. We are stardusts, because our elements, chemical elements, have been produced inside the stars. Our atoms are produced inside the stars. And being as curious beings as we are, I think it's the right time to ask questions about life, about what is life, as Schrödinger, one of the father of quantum physics, did about 100 years ago. We still didn't answer this question. We may be a step closer by trying to open the door towards a better understanding of quantum physics and its genuine properties like superposition of states and of what Einstein called spooky action at distance, namely the entanglement, this capacity of two particles. Isn't this amazing? I have one electron here, one on the moon. I do something on an electron here, the one on the moon feels it immediately. Isn't that amazing? Are these properties fueling our life? Are they important for life? Can they be a way that life used to communicate? Can they explain the engine, the fabric of life? So that's what I'm proposing here. And that's what Foundational Questions Institute is going to investigate. We are looking for partners interested to do this. Of course, for the sake of knowledge, but also because this might represent the next border on technologies, quantum technologies within us. 
And with this, I really invite you to follow me and let's open this door towards a new world and a new frontier and investigate it towards understanding better who we are. Are we part of the universe or is the universe part of us? Thank you very much.